In this video, we're going to talk about gesture drawing, how you can take all of your complex anatomy and clothing and all the things that go into figures, reduce them down to the simplest, simplest forms, and then reduce even further by loosening up and just quickly gesturally throwing down something that places your figure and gets a general movement and feel. I'm David Finch, and I'm a professional comic book artist. If you like the video, please hit like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon. So I'm starting the video with a male and female figure drawn uh, simply. This is a method that I've developed. It's from Loomis, and then it's from How to Draw Comics in Marvel Way, and then it's also just years of experience and, and trying different things and getting uh, forms that, that connect together in a way that I like. I will cover this more extensively in another video. The purpose of this video, though, is how to use these figures in a very simple way, very direct and very quick form of gestural sketching. So I'm going to start my examples with uh, just a random selection of figures. What you really want to do is eliminate all of your anatomy, eliminate all of your detail, your fingers, and, and things that, that slow your drawings down and work as quickly as possible and just block in your basic forms just to get an expression of a figure. And so you want to hold your pencil very loosely. Just relax your hand. It's very easy to start pressing in and scribbling really tightly and trying to get something tight and, and to want to have a, a finished picture right away. But the point of this is to have a very, very simple construction that not only is easy to edit and easy to change, but it's also going to be much more loose and fluid because you are just throwing the line and, and not really worrying about getting something that's absolutely perfect. And so now I'm going to draw a female figure. Something I find that really works is if you have the shoulders pointing and angled in one direction, you angle the pelvis the other direction, and it gives the body a lot of, of curvature and movement. Again, this is another topic that I'd like to cover more extensively in another video. Not only flow lines for figures and how they can give your figures a lot more of an interesting rhythmic feel, but also how to use force in your figures and how to take advantage of gravity and how to direct force through your figure. Now I'm going to draw somebody sitting down. I'm going to change up the angle so you're looking down at them. And for this one, I'm not drawing in perspective. I'm, I'm really doing this. I'm just eyeballing it, but it's all very, very simple shapes that I'm just connecting together. The more comfortable you get with these shapes, the more comfortable you get with just the, the simple tubes for arms and, and simple tubes for legs, more of a, a boxy kind of a sphere-ish thing for a head and a barrel shape for a chest. The more you can just turn those in space, um, the easier these kinds of figures will be. And really, the more you do these kinds of figures, the easier it will be for you to turn them in space. And that's the entire point of doing this. It's, it's actually not only to build up a mental catalog of, of poses and positions for your figures, but it's also to develop uh, a mental catalog of the way the figures move. So here's somebody running away. This is looking at somebody from behind. And this is just a quick, quick gestural sketch. It's got no, no identifying detail at all. But the whole point of it is just to get a quick statement. And I'm using all the, the same basic shapes that I use everywhere. You'll notice though that these shapes are simplified from the first images that I showed at the beginning of this video. Most importantly, I'm just keeping it as loose as possible. I'm really not overthinking any one line or any one shape. It's so easy for me to make adjustments. And I'm also allowing myself to scribble. And you'll notice as you watch these, the more I struggle, and there are places where I'm really confident with my line here, and it just flows, and then there are places like you can see on, on this leg that I'm drawing right now. I'm not really not as confident, and so it, it ends up being a bit of a darker scribble. But it's a place for me to be able to kind of work out those, those issues without worrying about folds or, or anatomy or, or lighting or any of those things. I want this to be as quick as, and as simple as possible. Also, because these figures are drawn so quickly, it means that it's very easy for me to put multiple figures into a scene together to arrange them and compose them without having to use a program um, like Clip Studio or, or something and, and try and resize and manipulate them, I can just very, very quickly draw and erase detail. And it's it doesn't matter if I have to erase an entire figure because what I'm drawing here is so quick and simple that it's, it's really very disposable. Here I'm going to draw a figure punching. I think this is a figure I've drawn in a comic a million times, I'm sure. 
And so I'm really just kind of coming up with stuff off the top of my head just to throw in here the kinds of figures that I run into drawing comics. You really never know when you get a script the kind of thing that will be asked for and you need to be able to draw it as efficiently as possible everything that the writer asked for. And now it's possible to get reference for, for everything, but that's a very, very tedious way of trying to work. And you also will never have the kind of fluidity and spontaneity with a reference figure than you'll get from something that you've just sketched quickly from your head. And the faster and more proficient you get at this, the more effective you'll be. Now, obviously, after this stage, you want to lighten this down and get in all your anatomy and try your best in getting all that detail to not lose the energy that you put into these. But the more energy you can get into these quick, simple sketches, the better your art will be. So it's important to know that there is a way of studying these sorts of figures and incorporating it into your work. What I recommend when you are starting out, you devote a substantial amount of time every day to just drawing these quick gestural sketches. So in a day that you're you're learning how to draw, you might be working on legs and working on, on anatomy, or you might be working on perspective or whatever it is that you're really studying, but devote a portion of your day to just filling a page with these kinds of sketches. I think that the only difference between an artist that's very dynamic and fluid versus an artist that can be a little bit stiff is just going through this process and just relaxing and just throwing out lines. Now, I think probably the most important tip that I have is what to look at. You need to be able to do these kinds of sketches from your imagination, and that's a, a goal that you need to get to, and I think it's something you need to practice at all times from the start. If you want these to become part of your own mental library, you need to just be creating them off the cuff. That's what will really sink in. But in order to improve these, you need to find sources, and I would recommend that you look at life. Look at people sitting in the restaurant or in the subway or walking down the street and just do really quick sketches of them. You see people doing this in parks and, and this is why they do it. It's an incredibly effective way of getting comfortable with the figure. Because we are doing more action-oriented comics, I also highly recommend that you look at other comic books. There's there's a hundred years of, of thousands of incredible artists. I, I, it's countless. Uh, and I could go on all day listing all of my favorite artists. Uh, you know, Joe Mad is a great example of an artist that just knows how to push a figure to its absolute limits and he does that every time and it creates something that is just stunning. Frank Frazetta is another great artist to look at. Mike McNola, and I've got my whole list of, of favorites, and I'm sure that you have yours, and what I recommend that you do is you go through comics, and you just draw from those books. Draw as many figures as you can, fill a page, and do it every day, and then find another artist and do it. And don't just use one artist because all of us, every every comic artist, every development artist, we all have a, a way of working that gets a little bit ingrained over time, and you want to be able to broaden your knowledge knowledge as much as possible and take advantage of all the work that's been done for so many years by so many artists. All right, so now that we've drawn a bunch of figures just randomly on the page, uh, just loosening up and, and trying some different poses, I want to take what we've done and put it into practice, and we're going to draw a cover layout. So I'm going to start with, with Wolverine. He's in the foreground. It's generally, number one, I, I tend to put my favorite character in the foreground of a, of a shot, you know, and I also start with the foreground because it's easier for me to add figures behind other figures and lay them in that way than it is for me to have to erase out and put figures in the foreground, which, I mean, it happens. It just really depends on how a shot goes but I, I tend to do a lot of these kind of really really quick layouts I try not to turn a whole lot of these into editorial because I know which one I like and it, I find if you give too many choices you end up drawing a cover you don't like but just on my own kind of behind the scenes I draw quite a few of these until I have something that I feel like really fits together and in each one I don't just randomly throw in figures and say hey if it works great and if it didn't work I'll just try another one I do put a quite a bit of work into trying to make each one of them fit together as well as possible. It's very easy for me to do that because the figures are so simple, so quickly drawn. So I want to stay as loose and gestural with these as I possibly can. I'm just scribbling. Sometimes I'll draw those, I'll draw those shapes, I'll draw the bottom of the chest shape, and I'll draw in more complete forms if I feel like I, I'm needing it because I'm, I'm not seeing the shape. And other times it'll get really, really simple and, and quick. And it just depends on, on the needs of what I'm trying to see for the figure. So I've got, maybe this will be Jean Grey or Storm, and uh, I've drawn her in behind Wolverine. And it's really easy for me to size her in the way that I want and make it all fit together like a little piece. And here's another piece of my puzzle. I don't like how I'm, I'm drawing. I'm starting to actually draw him a little bit uh, hunched over, almost like Wolverine was. And I don't want to mirror that. I want it to 
stand up straight and look up at it so it, it gives it a little bit of a contrast from the figure below it and there he is very easy for me to place him in i make sure he's just slightly smaller than my gene gray or my um my storm and now i'm going to add another figure here and i'm just finding a space where you know, other figures aren't and and just filling out my composition I, I really want to make sure i don't have any gaping holes and make sure that they all kind of connect, uh, connect together in a way that looks pleasing So I'm actually talking, I'm not drawing and talking at the same time. I'm recording this afterwards in, in case it's not obvious, but uh, I've got his leg there now lifted the same way that I've got the figure above him lifted. And so they're, they're much too close to each other and I would never leave that. Uh, it's making me actually want to go back and, and fix that even for the purposes of this, even though this is just an example layout. Now I've got some dead space over on the other side, uh, but I'm starting to get a little bit more limited in, in my space. So I'm going to use a flying character and that's a good place to pop them out of the picture. I want to make sure that they're, all of their joints, everybody's joints, their hands, elbows, ideally, are, are showing and are, are not obscured. So I wouldn't want uh, one person's hand to overlap another person's hand. That's That can start to look a little awkward now i'm gonna throw in a big huge giant character i have no idea who this would be it really doesn't matter but i just thought you know just for some contrast and because i'm making this up i don't even know who these characters are for the most part i i drew avengers for a while quite a while ago now and there was giant man and i loved them because i could just drop them in the back of a composition not only did he cover all the backgrounds so i wasn't having to draw a million buildings that was nice but also just compositionally i'd love the contrast of this massive figure behind my my team and so there you go, I, I've got them all kind of interlocked and connected. Very easy for me to do that because I'm really thinking about how everything works together instead of trying to think about how that hand looks or how that leg looks or any of that. And because I've drawn so many of these little simple figures, I can actually make those, those simple figures, even without any kind of thought at all, work well enough to actually be a basis for something that I can complete. So now I'm gonna take the same technique. I just wanted to draw a couple of hands really quickly just to show that the same way of drawing a whole figure works, works Works for hands and I highly highly recommend that you go through comics of artists that you think draw really great gestural hands and and just do this fill pages of this stuff because of all things hands are an almost entirely different object to draw depending on the pose of the the angle that you see them at so they really require you develop a whole visual library uh just just for them and it's something that's really worth devoting a lot of time to and it can be incredibly relaxing once you start getting comfortable with them it's just it's fun to draw them I'm just going to draw another hand to be, I guess, the opposing hand. Uh, another thing that I, I really recommend, uh, the old Disney artists were, were incredible, obviously. And there are some character sheets of hands from the, the 50s, 60s, uh, some of the the movies that they, they did at the time. And you've got, you're just drawn really gestural cool hands and i really recommend you look it up and and give it a shot so now the, the final point i wanted to quickly cover the importance of trying to approximate your finished picture in your your gesture getting actual anatomy is, is not what you're after but what you do want to do is is use this as a chance to to internalize shapes to the extent that they come out almost like handwriting now this isn't any kind of a finished arm or any kind of a finished leg and it requires some adjustments but this is what's coming out of my head without putting any thought into it at all it really is like writing my name and that's what comes from repetition you just do this over and over and just observe as you do it and this gets natural
for shortening is, is a, a subject that we're going to talk about quite a bit in some upcoming videos. But uh, just quickly, I, I want to show you how easy it is to draw very simple for shortening on a figure when you're doing it this quickly and this this loosely. You can block in your shapes and see if it's going to work and if it all holds together without drawing something so complete. And now I'm going to draw an arm projecting out towards you. The forearm is going to be obviously longer than the upper arm and they all overlap over each other and the hand's going to be larger and project out further than the uh, the forearm in a lot of ways really good for shortening that has some drama to it is is like using a, a special lens on a camera i'm not familiar enough with the cameras it's just wide angle or air high i don't know but you get a bit of an extreme perspective so it really pushes the foreground and background and that's what you're looking for for comic book perspective certainly because you want that drama you want it to project right out into your face you know jack kirby style that's his innovation among many i mean and among the characters that he created but my favorite thing about jack kirby really was was his use of for shortening to just punch you right in the face on a comic page and it, it revolutionized i think how things were were drawn now i'm i'm just drawing in some really really quick simple perspective lines i'm going to draw a figure in perspective so you're looking up at them and i think it's, it's really important to practice your figures this way uh draw perspective and then draw them in this is effectively drawing them in an environment i i know exactly what my angle is the the way that i'm looking at them and just drawing figures just on the page if you're sketching just floating the limitation of that is once you have a room or a, a rooftop or, or some kind of a scene in a comic it can be a little daunting like you know how do you get them to fit and make them look like they are part of your environment and the way that you do that is when you're sketching and you'll find a ton of comics or magazines or or life whatever it is draw things to look like they are part of an environment draw some really simple just sketch perspective and make sure that your figures line up with it Now, the last thing I'm, I'm going to do is just quickly take everything that I've learned. I'm just making this figure up. I don't really even know what the pose is. I'm just kind of drawing. Um, I know that I'm, I'm drawing him facing away. This is sometimes, for me, a, a relaxing experiment. And that's just, uh, I just start moving. I think of a general angle that I'm seeing the, the, the figure from. And then I just want to find a way to make it make it visually interesting. And I'm, I'm using all of the techniques that I've, I've learned through all these other figures. So I'm really not totally rubber and making this up from nothing. I've got his weight balanced on his front bent leg and you can see that he's putting weight on that leg and I've got him projecting his force up from his rear leg that's pushing off from the ground below and it's pushing up you can see there's a line going all the way up through his body from the tip of his toe up to the top of his head and that's pushing up through i can also see that his his front leg the angle is is off so i'm gonna fix that quickly and this is a great thing about drawing the the closer you can get in a really really simple gestural way to your final figure the more you'll see the kinds of problems you're going to have with that figure going forward and you get that done in a minute instead of investing hours into a figure and then thinking uh oh it's, it's really not looking how i intended it to look so adjusting the angle of the hips there kind of solved that problem and this is just it's a gesture but this is something that i can build my figure on top of it's it's part of a scene and i need to be able to put scenes together quickly and easily of people running up the stairs or sitting in an office or ordering takeout or hailing a taxi i can't possibly meet a deadline if i'm having to find reference for all of those things every single time all right thank you so much for watching and i will see you in the next video